Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over exponents and their properties. So we can start by looking at a to the b power. Um, in this case, a would be the base. And b would be the exponent. So when we're looking at an exponent, something like x to the fifth power, we want to think of it as repeated multiplication. So an exponent like this would also be equal to x times x times x times x times x. So when we have an exponent here where, like I said before, we're thinking of repeated multiplication. So x to the fifth power is you're just multiplying x by itself five times. So if we plug in actual numbers now, let's say we have... 3 to the 5th power, just like x to the 5th, you would multiply 3 by itself 5 times. So 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So that's basically what an exponent is. Now, exponents do have different properties, and you may want to memorize these. They're not too hard to memorize. There isn't that many of them, and they're normally quite simple. So the first property of exponents that uh, we're going to look at is multiplying. So we can do various things with exponents. And one thing we can do with them is we can actually multiply them. Uh, we can multiply exponents. So when we're multiplying exponents together, let's say we had a to the b times a to the c. So if you're given a problem like this, where you're multiplying two numbers with exponents together, this is going to equal a to the b plus c power. So let's say, let me use actual numbers, not variables here. Let's say I had 2 to the third power times 2 to the 6th power. So in this case, 2 is obviously a, 3 is b, and 6 is c. So we're going to keep the a, so we're going to keep the 2, and that is going to be to the b plus c, or to the 3 plus 6 power. So 2 to the 3 plus 6 power is also equal to 2 to the 9th power, since 3 plus 6 is 9. So, as I said before, when looking at this, a to the b times a to the c is equal to a to the b plus c. So when you're looking at 2 to the 3rd power times 2 to the 6th power, that is going to equal 2 to the 9th power. So um, what I want you to get from this is that when you're multiplying exponents, uh, you're going to keep the base, keep the base the same as your answer, but you're going to add the two exponents together. So a to the b plus c. So that's what you do when you multiply exponents. Now there's something else you can do with exponents and that's called um, a power of a power. So what this basically is, is let's say you had something like a to the b power, and you put that in parentheses, and then you have all of that. You have a to the b power to the c power. So if I plugged in actual numbers here, it could look something like 2 to the second power, and all of that would be to the third power. Now, we could just um, do what's in the parentheses first, obviously, because of PEMDAS. So we could do 4 put that in parentheses, and then just have 4 to the third power. But if you want it to be a little bit faster, you could use this property. And the property is a to the b power all to the c power is going to equal a to the b times c power. So in this case, when we're doing power of a power, we aren't adding the exponents, we're actually multiplying them. So when using real numbers, if we had something like 2 to the second power, all to the third power, that would equal 2 to the 2 times 3 power. So 
what you want to get from this, the property, is that a to the b power, to all to the c power is going to equal a to the b c power, a to the b times c power. And that's going to make you be a little faster because you don't have to do what's in the parentheses first and then um, put that to the power. All you have to do is look at this and you know right away that when you're doing a power of the power, um, it's going to be a to the b times c power. Okay, so that's the power of a power property. Sorry if you just heard my dog barking. Okay, so another property that's going to be really useful when you're dealing with exponents, um, it'll just make you a little bit more faster and efficient, is power of a product. And you could use this property in a problem that looks like something like a times b and then all of that everything that's in the parentheses is going to be to the c power the property is that a times b to the c power is equal to or is the same thing as a to the c power times b to the c power so when we're dealing with numbers and not variables this could look something like three times 4 all to the fifth power would be equal to 3 to the fifth power times 4 to the fifth power. And remember that when we're multiplying exponents together, we're not going to want to um, multiply each exponent to get 12 to the 25th power, we're going to want to add them together. So 3 to the 5th times 4 to the 5th power would be equal to 12 to the 10th power. So basically what this property is, is that a times b to the c power is equal to a to the c times b to the c. So basically we're just taking out the a by itself and putting it to the c power, then taking out the b by itself and also putting that to the c power, and that essentially is the same thing as a times b to the c power. So that's the power of a product property. And now the final, and what I think is the simplest property, is going to be the zero exponent property. The zero exponent property. Now the zero exponent property is, like I said before, quite simple. Basically all it is is that um, anything, any exponent that's to the zero power, so if we had a and that's to the zero power, is going to be equal to one. So no matter what it is, if it's five to the zeroth power, if it's one thousand to the zeroth power, they're all going to be equal to one. Now, if we have something in a parentheses, no matter how long it is, so if it's something like eight x to the fifth, y to the sixth, and that's in parentheses and all to the zeroth power, even though this might look like it's quite large, it's still going to be equal to one. So anything that's to the zeroth power is equal to one. So if you're multiplying something like five to the zeroth power times six, we know that five to the zeroth power is equal to one. So that's just going to be equal to one times six, which is six. So um, once again, the zero exponent property is that anything to the zeroth power is equal to Okay, one. so now we're going to do some practice problems that will incorporate all of the different properties that we've learned today into one equation. So this is 5x squared times y to the second power times 3y squared times z cubed to the second power is equal to what? Okay, so the way we're gonna start, how we're gonna start with this problem is we're just gonna start by looking at 5x squared y to the second power. So um, what we're gonna do here is we're going to incorporate all of these different things, 
look at all these different things, not incorporate, look at them, and we're all going to put them to the second power since they're all in the parentheses. So this is basically virtually the same thing as 5 squared times x squared squared times y squared. So this is equal to this. So basically, the only thing we did is that we um, squared everything in the parentheses because all, all of this in the parentheses should be squared because we're squaring it right here. So this is equal to this. Now let's look at the second part of the um, equation, this. Now we're going to do the same thing as we did with the first part of the equation. We're just going to change it up a little bit, but it will still be equal. We're still looking at the same equation, just in a different form. So we're going to square all of the different things in the parentheses. So this is equal to 3 squared times y squared squared times z cubed squared. And remember, we are multiplying these two things together, so don't forget to put your multiplication sign right there. Now, let's simplify these down even further. So, 5 squared is equal to 25, and uh, we're going to, that's multiply equal to x squared squared, and remember, this is the power of a power property. So we know that x squared squared, when we have a power of a power, we're going to multiply this two and this two exponent together. So that's going to be equal to x to the two times two power, or x to the fourth power. So right there, we just used the power of a power property. And then we're going to multiply that 2 by y squared. Okay, so now we simplified this down even further as part of our equation. And now let's move on to simplifying this one down further. So 3 squared is equal to 9. y squared squared, which is also power of a power, um, is going to be equal to y to the fourth power. And then z cubed squared, which is also power of a power, is going to be equal to z to the sixth power, since we're multiplying 3 by 2. Okay, so now we have this. We've changed, we've converted this equation into this. This has become this. And um, we're almost done, but we aren't quite there yet. Um, it can still be simplified further. So now let's look at multiplying all of these different things together to get um, this equation down to its simplest form. Let's look at the things we can multiply together um, that can simplify this down even further. So we can multiply 25 by 9. So 25 times 9, that's going to be, I think, 225. 225. Now let's look at x to the fourth times y to the fourth. Now we cannot combine those. Those cannot really multiply together. The, they're already in its simplest form. But we can multiply y squared times y to the fourth together. And that's going to be equal to y to the sixth power. So now the y is in its simplest form, y to the sixth. And finally, we have x to the 4th and z to the 6th left. Now we can't multiply those together, so we're just going to have to put them right on the answer because they're already in their simplest form. We can't multiply them anymore since there are no other z's and there are no other x's. So this could be our final answer. This is our final answer. However, it's in the wrong order. Um, all of this is correct. We Our final simplest form of this equation is multiplying these together, 225 times y to the 6th times x to the 4th times z to the 6th. However, they aren't in the correct order. So when you have a final answer, um, you're going to want to 
put the number is always going to go first. So we have that correct. 225 is always going to be first. But your letters should be in alphabetical order. So this goes YXZ, whereas it should be XYZ. So I'm just going to change this to 225 times X to the fourth. Here, let me just change the color back to red. So 225 times x to the fourth, times y to the sixth, and times is z to the sixth. So this is going to be our final answer. Using our exponent properties, we've converted this equal to this. So that is going to be our answer for question number one. Okay, so this is the next problem, um, 2x cubed times y, and then we're squaring all of that. So we're basically going to do what we did in the last problem. We're going to square each individual piece in the parentheses. So this is going to be equal to, equal to 2 squared times x squared, or sorry, x cubed squared times y squared. And um, we can move further down, uh, simplify it further by looking at 2 squared, that becomes 4. Then we have a power of a power scenario here. So in power of power, um, like I said before, we're multiplying the um, b times the c, so 3 times 2, and keeping x the same, so x to the third power, all to the second power, is going to be equal to x to the sixth power. Then we're just multiplying that by y squared. Now, um, all of this is basically in its simplest form. We can't really um, simplify it down any further, so... And it is in the correct order. The number is first, and x and y are in alphabetical order. So let me just remove these multiplication signs. And we have 4x to the 6th power, y to the 2nd power as our final answer. Okay, final problem. So like the first problem, for this we're going to kind of do it in two separate parts. So we're going to solve for this, simplify this first, and then this, and then towards the end we will multiply them together. So let's start with 5a to the zeroth power. Now, if you remember the zero exponent property from earlier in this video, you'll know that anything to the zero power is equal to 1. So to simplify this, it's actually quite easy. All you're going to do is change this to 1, because 5a to the zeroth power is equal to 1. So now we have 1 times 3 times 6b squared, and 3 times 6b squared is first we have to, because of PEMDAS, we have to um, put this exponent, right? So this is going to become 1 times 3 times 36b squared. Because when we have, um, when we have 6b squared, what we're doing is we're squaring 6 and then we're squaring b. And then multiplying them together is getting 36b squared. So 6b all squared is equal to 36b squared. So now we have 1 times 3 times 36b squared. Okay, so first, this is still 1. We're keeping that as 1 because it's already um, simplified. But 3 times 36b squared is not. So 3 times 36b squared, we just multiply the 3 times 36b squared, and we get 108b squared, because 3 times 36 is 108. So now we have 108b squared times 1. So we have um, converted this, or simplified this, down to this, and 1 times 108b squared is obviously just 108b squared. 
So that is the final answer of the final practice problem in this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you um, in the next video. Where are you barking? Hmm? Hmm?